Welcome. Hello. Good morning. Thank you very much for being here today. And uh, today's event will carry on so that I will give the floor to Mr. Binas, who works for the memory programs at our town hall here in Barcelona. You have the floor. And I actually apologize him because he will have to be leaving us sooner than expected and we've been uh, well we had to change a little bit up to this program so sorry about that okay right before further ado I would like to thank um, the vice uh, director here at the um, Solidarity Foundation the Eurom uh, director who uh, is responsible for one of the best archives on the international brigades. And uh, thank you for the, to the town hall and the local government because they've invited me to participate in this event today in such an important and uh, handy event, let's say, for our city, Barcelona. Let me specify why I say it is convenient because we are living a sort of uh, unhappy moment, bad moment. I am aware that it's not very kind maybe for me to start uh, using these words, but um, I mean not only what's happening in our city, in our country, in Europe, also in the West, the East in general. Overall, really, precisely because we're living a situation um, totally uh, different to, to well, uh, in this globalized world since the Second World War. This uh, sort of situation had never happened before. We have tense, uh, um, tense relationships in this international arena. And maybe in the four, uh, well, all over the planet, a very radicalized right wing could be in power, even more so than um, what's for the last 70 years since the end of World War II. It's not a right hand side politic of the sort of classic f uh, fascism, like in the 30s, 40s, which was, um, uh, one militarily, but not from the uh, cultural um, perspective. This actually true possibility of managing this whole politics overall in the globe from this radical right-wing politic, it manifests in very specific ways the Austria-Hungarian-Italian Austria -Hung axis in Europe, but also let's not forget um, also countries uh, like uh, uh, governed by Netanyahu, Trump or Putin, which when time passes by, they are destroying, really annihilating anything that was left of uh, progresses, progress or uh, left uh, politics. Thanks to the economic uh, models, uh, the way of establishing social relationships, it is spreading this sort of uh, way of thinking in a very hege hegemonous way all over the world. For example, South America, the really real possibilities by Bolsonaro, which is a really striking, horrible issue. This uh, politician who a few weeks ago told another politician, a lady, I'm not raping you because you don't even deserve that. So we are really living a very hard uh, moment because culturally, which is gathering us in an um, we find this sort of happenings and behaviors by the European Parliament, which behind its apparent uh, well-being or good being, it should make us think. I believe it was yesterday or a few days ago what was happening and approved uh, 
what was happening with regard to the fascist uh, politics, but let's be careful about it because it's uh, it's a big, big failure because if 40, 50, 60 years afterwards, fascism is still scary, even 70 years afterwards, it is necessary. It's necessary to close these institutions. What's been happening for these 70 years when Austria, when the government says they're going to destroy Hitler's home because it's going to become a fascism monument? Is it a sort of expression of failure? Uh, we have created wonderful cultural and educational uh, programs in Frankfurt, in Bonn. For many years, universities have done great, great efforts to explain what, uh, basically to give elements, and even though we are scared, really scared of uh, this sort of monument or place of uh, devotion towards Hitler. So I believe it's worth mentioning in this arena here amongst all of you academics and uh, interested people. And with regards to Barcelona, to our city, this, of course, worries us. We are anti-fascists, of course, history proves that. At the moment, our government is anti-fascist, uh, obviously, and a government which understands that the way to stop fascism is done through social uh, social um, sh social buildings apartments uh, pri privatizing water um, helping people basically um, devoting on education, etc. This is a way for our local government to fight against fascism and also by remembering all those who were mistreated, who were tortured, who suffered to defend our liberties. And in that sense, next uh, Thursday, I can let you know that uh, the town hall here in Barcelona we will approve a new law uh, specifying that people who have been persecuted by the Franco regime since the 60s until the 78 will guarantee this law that all those residents in Barcelona who were tortured by because of their uh, struggle uh, to to build the democracy they will be listened and welcomed and their needs will be solved uh, by, uh, by all of us. This is not a law, though, for victims. There were people represaliated, people who were, uh, who were actually um, uh, retaliated, sorry, people who, who had been retaliated. And it's really worth remembering all of them and uh, this struggle has really helped us uh, reach equality uh, levels and this person who's been retaliated it's because he's adopted an ethic decision which has caused him all this suffering so this is what the town council wants to to recognize and to honor so after having shared with you these uh, sort of worrying reflections, I admit, I would like to you to remember this anti-fascism nature of our local politics here in Barcelona. I'm really sure that this event organized uh, thanks to the Eurom and the UB will be really fruitful, interesting, and I suggest all of you uh, can join us on um, Sunday at noon in front of the International Brigade's monument, which was given by the Abraham Lilcom Brigadiers, and we will organize this official recognition um, uh, ceremony, and we will remember the departure of the Brigadists 80 years ago. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much, Mr. Vignas. I now give the floor to Mr. Jordi Guiche. He is the director of the European Observatory of Solidarity Memories of the um, University of Barcelona called EUROM. The floor is yours, Jordi. Thank you very much, Vice Chancellor, Vice Rector, Ricard Vignas, uh, dear friends. I see many friendly faces in the audience coming from different associations and the academic world. It's been a long time since we started working with the history, the memory, transfer, and the dissemination of our violent past events that represent an act um, with a, uh, as, a, as something that has consequences in the f in the present. I will start with the very end, because the director of the foundation, Mr. Xavier Lopez, gave me the document and the resolution from the Observatory of the Solidarity Foundation of the university. This resolution that Ricard Viñas was referring about um, of the European Parliament, it is worrisome. It is something that worries me. And I just come from Madrid. I took the high-speed train. We had a congress uh, at the University Carlos III. And there was a round table with a colleague of mine uh, coming from Hungary, a Hungarian colleague. Uh, and there was also Josefina Cuesta and some experts in Spain on memory transfer. And in this discussion round table, he presented three memorials and um, discussions, the university discussions on, on this memory. And what he did was to just, do I have to speak Spanish? Oh, by the way, apologies, I'm going to switch to Spanish. I have some. Um, accent, a bit of an accent from the Pyrenees, but I'll do my best. In any case, I just wanted to, to share with you something. We had to stop the camera. We couldn't record anymore when this, when this profession, this Hungarian colleague had to discuss the situation of teachers and professors and because the day after tomorrow, the Central University of Barcelona in Budapest will close. And from the top management, they are manipulating the, uh, the historic approaches. So it's not just a fear of this increase of neo-fascism and far ring wing parties, but also these ultra-right political parties that do invest in memory policies, uh, in history policies. The, um, Rajoy did not invest in that, but I don't know if the civil society, the university, and the transnational um, associations are the ones who need to develop projects and act along with the civil society and different institutions as we are doing today. As a matter of fact, I'll try to be brief, but I would like to congratulate Lourdes Pradas and the organizers because at the Republic Pavilion we got together. And of course, as a foundation for solidarity of the University of Barcelona, we joined these events of reflection and of this 80th anniversary of the farewell of the International Brigades. This program, will, will, today we will have um, some discussions and roundtables, and those of us who have been working with monuments will and have published articles in Poland, and we did, we did want to speak not just about gender issues in the brigades, but also we would like to start a discussion on something that is really important, which is the memorial competence between the East and the West and the narrative in Europe. In the case of international brigades, this narrative can be a big problem, as in Poland, for example. And we will have a professor and an expert on these topics. Two years ago, we also celebrated um, the, acts, the, the events with George Mink, and his dad was one of the brigadiers of the Botwin Brigade. 
a representative with a Jew origin, Polish also, and he came to the People's Olympiads and he stayed in Barcelona as many athletes. And then in September of the October, they joined the international brigades and they fought in the civil war until 1938. And then they were in the French battles and he even was in Auschwitz, but he was freed afterwards. And his memorial task was a great example, and his biography is real, really um, a, a very good proof of the 20th century, because we all have this conflict still in our history. And I would just like to thank all the speakers, Professor Skutelsky, who, along with Robert Frank, has been working, and he, maybe he will not remember me, but we were together in Paris a while ago, and Robert Kual, I don't know where he is, but it's been a while now since we didn't see each other, and the rest of experts, I would like to thank them for being here, Enrique. I hope this uh, discussion is uh, fruitful, and Lourdes, your project is magnificent. Uriol, Ricard, Fernanda from the observatory team, thank you all, and Juanjo Romero from the Casas Study Abroad program with four universities. And I'm surely forgetting somebody, but I would like to thank you all and welcome you all to this session. Okay, thank you very much, Jordi. Now I give the floor to Ms. Lourdes Pradas. She's the CRI responsible, the librarian from the Republic Pavilion at the UP. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for being here today in this commemoration uh, um, event uh, remembering the 80th anniversary. This is a historian memory act, but also a recognition act for all those who abandoned their families and the commodities to fight a war which was not theirs. Everybody's intention today is remembering from our collective memory all those who came to fight for those ideals, leaving here a few of them, many of them, their lives. I would like to thank uh, to the Vice Rector Bilalta who has wa wanted to inaugurate this uh, act and Dr. Guichet, the Rome, and especially Fernanda Nuriol because working with them has been a great pleasure thanks to their patience, dedication, phone calls, many last minute changes, and a great thanks for the CRI uh, di direction and management because they've allowed uh, the library to be coordinating this seminar. Also, we'd like to thank the Vice Rector of uh, Dr. Spreu because of his research and interest in our project and website and his 100% confidence and trust in our team because voluntarily we have been working really hard. Thank you to the Vice Rector, Dr. Pujol, and professors of the IT and mathematics faculties because they've also helped us in this adventure. and. Uh, without fa also, I would like I would like to thank the Seed Dream. Uh, thank you for your enthusiasm and being here today. I believe this session will be really, really a great success because it's the common result of our common work. We've been working really hard for the last months to make this seminar possible. And as a brigadist would say, adelante. Let's go. Thank you, Lourdes. Just a few words, please, to conclude these welcome speeches. Uh, let me talk to you on behalf of the rector, the vice rector, the director of the Solidarat to the Foundation, Jordi Lourdes. Thank you all for being here. First of all, I would like to congratulate the organizers' team because uh, very often we say that we do need these sort of events, but someone needs to make the phone calls and organize the spaces. And as Lourdes mentioned, it's obviously really hard organizing something like this. So thank you very much for having done so. And really, 
what I would like to tell you, it has been written in Catalan. I come from Vic, from rural Catalonia, so you will hopefully be able to translate. Um, Almost 35,000 volunteers from more than 50, 50 different countries, they came to Spain to help the Republic and to fight against fascism. The liberal democracies had abandoned uh, through a non-intervention agreement, which um, it just so happened to favor the rebel troops who had been fought uh, against the Republican um, Republic. Under the international, the Communist International, the international brigades started being organized. They were military units organized by these um, anti-fascist uh, groups and a few names. Um, who took, um, but most of the volunteers came from the working class and approximately 10,000 lost their lives. On 21st of September 1938, Juan Negrín, the president, announced on the Society of Nations their retreat, hoping that Italy and Germany would also retreat theirs but it was a useless act. In order to save, to farewell them, a great party was organized on the 28th of October 1938. So it's almost 80 years and three days, or less than three days. And I would like to highlight uh, La Pasionaria's words, Dolores Irraruri. We will not forget you, she said, and when, the, when, when we forget you, Please, when the Republic is born again like a flower, please come back. We have not forgotten you. This is why we're here today. We're here to remember you. And we do so in this great, wonderful room, one of the most noble and beautiful uh, spaces in such a historical building. Because we want to recover and remember history, not to reopen wounds, not to be nostalgic, but to understand what happened. To also understand what is happening at the moment so that some of these things never ever happen again. And also to uh, repair, to honor, to build. And we need to do that, you know, associations, foundations, institutions, and of course the university being a social agent with a great responsibility, not only because what we teach, because of what we teach and transmit. This is why it's a, an act of justice. We must do it within these university walls. So it's a great privilege to be able to do it here at the Universitat de Barcelona. This university, the UB, is a really committed one, and one of its major objectives is the promotion of liberty, liberty of thought in, an, in a self-critical way. So I believe whatever happens today is illuminated by this will of uh, speaking in a self-critical way with liberty, with freedom. Having a look at today's program, I would like to highlight a few aspects. First of all, I would like to thank all of our speakers today. I would like to congratulate who's managed to bring here today the wonderful speakers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. very important for us, your participation in this meeting. And secondly, I would like to thank and congratulate the organizers for the topics that have been selected, because it's not usual to find in roundtables uh, speeches and discourses who speak on women, spe specifically the case of the Arabs, for example, or be it the working class. Far too often we don't talk about the weak ones, we make them invisible. So thank you very much because you have wanted to highlight these issues. And finally, with regards to today's program, our round table will allow us for the current research being done 
by youngsters from our university. We will give them, uh, we will have their voice heard today. This will allow us to ensure these memories kept alive and the topics that um, will be talked about actually do interest the youngsters. So this new generation is actually uh, doing this research, which is wonderful. And finally, I would like to thank for the people here having this room full. This actually proves that, the, that this topic was necessary. We are really anxious to be able to, to talk about it and to do so with the guarantees and the freedom that these university walls uh, give, ensure us. Thank you very much for being here. So without further ado, let's enjoy today's work. Let's uh, enjoy it, all of you. Thank you very much.